Hey everybody, welcome back to MoFro's Reef. I'm Wayne and today we're going to do some testing on the 205. I'm going to show you exactly how I, uh, how I test for my parameters and then I, testing's been, it's been done many, many times. Um, maybe there's a couple things that I can show you that uh, you don't know that'll help you out to make you a little more accurate in testing. Okay, let's get to it. Alright, so I have all my test files and then for each one of my tanks that I have, I have different syringes that I use. You know, so I don't cross contaminate any of my water. So I'm going to use this one right here for everything below 10 mils. So what I've come to find out was if you have uh, a hand checker, it has a 10 mil line on it. So on the syringe, what I do is if you stick it in the water and pump it, you can get all the air bubbles out of there. Pull it up past 10. And then what I do is I take the plunger line, there's like a little, uh, maybe a sixteenth of a lip, put it on the back side of that. That's showing up. See the line? It's right there. The plunger's right there. So if I do that with everything I measure, I always know I get exactly, exactly what I need. And the most important part about testing is being con consistent. There's no ifs and buts about it. Being consistent is the number one thing. So for five, you know, I'm gonna go four, four and a half. I'm gonna hit the five right at the top of the plunger, and then I put the plunger right on the backhand side there. Another big thing with testing too is, is if you dose like I do, I dose my uh, calcium during the day, and then I dose my alkalinity at night to try to keep my, my pH in check. Um, if you don't check at the same time every day, don't worry about your numbers being off because, you know, if I test in the morning to, and if I test in the evening, my numbers are, they're off, you know. I mean, like my alkalinity will be uh, in the morning, it'll be, you know, in the mid eights, low eights, and then I normally always try to test between 8 and 9 p.m. That's, you know, what's most common for me to do, and then that's when I know my, my alkalinity is 7.5, 7.5, 7.5. But uh, if I test in the morning, it's, it's definitely a lot higher. So in that sense, don't ever try chasing numbers because you'll just drive yourself mad. Okay, magnesium. This is gonna be the uh, long-winded version too, just to let you know. We're gonna go at it for a while because I do a lot of testing. This is my... Uh, Potassium. Potassium is two mils of tank water and three mils of RODI. And then when I have anything over 10 mils, I just switch to, you know, 205 tank only. I'll switch to the 20 mils. So this is my, my iron, the 17 mils, so I do the same thing. Just come back up. Put that on the backhand side there. This is for my iron. And then I have the prophosphate test. I use all Red Sea hand checkers for my alkalinity. So my nitrates 16. I'll try to speed a lot of this up because this is probably going to be a couple batteries worth. Alright, alright. Let's get this party started. So I got uh, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, my hand checker of calcium, my hand checker of uh, phosphates, pure test kit. This is my uh, ammonia, NO2, NO3, pH calcium for, for the beginners this is the one you want this is the only test kit you'll need for the first year um, if you're getting into the hobby pretty much this will will keep you running and, and keep you in check just to let you know the only thing I use this one for is uh, for my ammonia but I know there's no ammonia in there so I'm not going to be using that one today and then I have my colors my iodine my potassium and my iron and then I have the the Pro Potassium Kit, and man, 
I just, uh, I don't know if you use a bulk reef supply or not. They're, they're my number one go-to. I mean, I live in Michigan, so I always get my stuff whenever I order it. I get it, um, you know, the third day. And uh, this kit is pretty expensive, you know, and you don't really get too many tests out of it. So I just bought a new one, and I bought all these. And I'm just going to bring this up because it happened to me. And, you know, if you don't use, if you use different test kits, you know, if you spill one or whatever, you got to buy a whole new test kit, the Red Seas. All the reagents are refillable so I had one of these and I was doing my magnesium and I was doing my potassium at the same time and I think I crossed my magnesium with one of these and I put the leftover of my magnesium in one of these bottles and I brand new because I did a test with it and it was it just it was I mean, it didn't even test, you know, it was way off, way off, and I went back to my originals and uh, it tested fine. So, I mean, even if that is a bad test kit, I'm not even going to bother with them because Bulk Reef Supply just sent me some uh, ESV, the eight gallons of uh, Bionic, that's my two-part solution that I used, and one came in and uh, the shipper or somebody must have dropped the box and it was, uh, it was leaking, you know, calcium all over the place, and man, two days, they gave me a new one and they gave me a new calcium one too which you know I didn't need but I use them it's a two-part you know so I mean whatever so I need to get back on uh, bulk reef supply and buy another reagent pack of my uh, my potassium so anyways first things first potassium is the longest and the most irritating test there is if you mess this up, you're out, especially at the, the back end of it, you know, because this is a half hour test. And uh, another big thing when it comes to testing is, you know, make sure you have your timers. I got two phones here just for running timers. When it says stuff on there, like check it in 15 minutes, that, that's not, you know, hey, it's maybe it's been, you know, if it says 15 minutes, check that shit in 15 minutes, you know, it's there for a reason. You know, especially when it comes to like ammonia. If you look at that at 30 seconds after, 15 minutes after, a half hour and an hour after it's all different colors you know so do what the directions say or else you're chasing numbers again <clears throat> so this potassium test is it's quite daunting it really is I got this and this, and this, and this, and this so I start with my longest test and then I'll, I'll get into some of the easy ones while I'm waiting for my timers to kick off And um, all these vials here, you know, the Red Sea comes with the little uh, tritation device, the little handheld thing you can screw onto the bottle. It's a gimmick, man. It's garbage. You know, you're way more accurate holding one of these in one hand and hold the vial in the other hand and doing one drop at a time, just to let you know. So I'm going to take my first potassium bottle. Has little directions on all the cards, exactly how to do it. I mean, it's pretty much idiot proof, unless your name's Wayne and you mess the same test up four times in three different spots, which I've had done. So it's uh, four drops of a. And then when I'm done with that one, I'll stick it back in the pan. Shake it. So this is probably my last test I can get out of this bottle right here. I think this is the one I might have messed up on there. I'm not sure which one it was. I'm kind of guessing. But I'm taking... It says take uh, 0.5 milliliters. So what I do with this is... I don't care if the air bubble's in there or not. It doesn't matter. I'll just make sure the syringe... Make sure As long as there's no air bubbles in between the solution. Now I'm going to put the syringe right at the tip of... Yeah. And then I'm going to squirt exactly five in here. Instead of going to five and pushing it all the way through and then kind of guessing, eh, well, you know, was that correct or not? You know, take all the guesswork out of it, go to 10 and push it down to five. That way, you know, you're getting exactly 0.5 milliliters. 
milliliters in, in, the, uh, in the solution. Okay, take that, squirt the rest of that back in there. And there's a lot of these things, so make sure you put these all back in. Or if you're not using the right city, just get them out of the way so you don't use them with another uh, another reagent or another chemical. So you do that, do that, and then it says let this sit. So I'm going to put this here, I'm going to put this here, and let that sit for 10 minutes. Set my timer for 10 minutes, boom. All right, game on. So I'm going to put this here and this here. This is the next part of this test. So let's do, uh, let's do my, my favorite test. This, if my God, I went two years without having an alkalinity Hanna checker. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan of Red Sea, but sometimes, man, just judging the color of red when you're squeezing the, the reagent in the vial, it's just... You know, it's it, it has some interpretation to it, and I didn't like that. And when you get this, you're just going to be absolutely amazed at how awesome this thing works. So I have one here for my alkalinity, and I have one here for my phosphate. So I label the bottom of this with alkalinity, and I put alkalinity on the cap. So the first thing I always do, okay, it's real important. I used to use paper towel to clean these. I don't know if you can tell on if it'll show up or not on camera. Let me see if I'm still recording. Um, there's a bunch of little scratches in here. It's from using paper towel. Microfiber cloth here to do my cleaning with. Okay. I know this has been beat like a dead horse, but I'm gonna go through one thing that I do on this check that uh, I haven't think anybody else has covered yet. Had Colvit 1. Stick it in, hit the button. While that's zeroing out, I'm going to do this. Make sure this is completely clean and completely empty. Okay, that's the most important part. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this in here. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to come back up just about an eighth of an inch. Start this plunger kind of slow. Come all the way up to the top. And your fluid should be flat and stable in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down to the top of 10 or 1 milliliters right to the top. Okay, and remember how I said consistency is the most important part? Every time I do this test, I have exactly 0 0.05 milliliters between the fluid and the top of the plunger. Every time. So if you do that and the, the fluid is actually up on the plunger, start off, start over and do it again. At least I do. Because if you don't, you don't know if you're going to be accurate. I cold it too. So I'm going to guess my... This is going to be at... It's been a week since I've done it. I'm guessing... It's a little early. I normally test between, like I said, eight and nine or nine, eight, nine and ten. Sometime right then, it's like five o'clock. I'm guessing this is gonna be like seven point seven. That's my guess. So you put the whole reagent in there. Okay. Do that. Um, I always normally have paper towel around. Come out around me right here. Okay. Put this back on. These aren't that expensive. These are only like six bucks, and you get like uh, 25 tests out of them, but you don't want to spill it. So I put that there, put that there. And then what I do, I mean, should you rinse these out with RODI water? Yeah. I just pull the plunger out. Just get all the stuff out of there. I mean, I'm not that anal. All right, throw that back in here. Okay, now, real important thing. Don't shake this. You don't want a bunch of micro bubbles in here. That's bad. Bad news. Okay. And every time I do this, every time I touch this, you know, because what it's doing is it's reading through the glass. So every time, wipe your fingerprints and every other smudge is off here. Check it in the light. Make sure there's no fingerprint smudges on there. You know, just go back and forth you know, 10, 15, 20 times, something like that. Stick that in there. Hit the button. See that? I was off a little bit. It's 7.9. Did I say 7.7? .7? So now what I do is my desk is just an absolute mess here. But uh, 
Okay, the lowest October 10th, I was at 7.2. And then today I was at 7.9. So I mean, my alkalinity is, I, I would consider that pretty stable. Like I said, I, I tested it on uh, December 13th and it was 7.5 and it was at 9.30. And today is December 19th. I would have to test again at exactly 9.45 to see if that drops, which I know it will. But anyways, everything's documented. Okay. So, alkalinity is out of the way. Let's go to my calcium. Last time I tested this was a little bit so This is five drops. I notice it it's a lot more accurate if you squeeze these pretty slow too in the first one you might get an air bubble in it that's why I bring it over here and I squirted it right on uh, this towel over here I'm gonna shake that up it says to shake it up for 10 seconds this is I don't know about the other test kits but the Red Sea when you're putting in your B reagent here your powder um, another thing I always do is you know, I'll take this and level it off and give me a nice level scoop. Um, this reagent right here, it's really important that you feather this in here lightly. Like that. If you just dump the whole thing in there, it, it'll encapsulate around itself and you'll be shaking the hell out of that vial, getting all mad. So, feather that in there like that. Mixes up nice and easy. It says mix it for 20 seconds. Air bubble between the plunger and your solution doesn't matter unless you're using this whole thing. And if you are, you got issues. But uh, you know the little air bubble. It's usually between you know 0.1 and 0.2 milliliters. That's just for the difference in the tip here. Okay. Now it's real important. Um, when you're doing your testing here, um, you're really not reading the card, you're just waiting for it to go from this color to like a blue. So I know I'm going to be close to uh, 0.8 mils, so I'm just going to kind of fly through this. It's blue, so I am at 0.88. So I'm going to go one more drop. Super blue. Okay, so now I'm going to stop this. 0.88. Flip the card over. 0.88 is 440. Put the rest of that in there. It's here. It's here. It's here. So now I'm going to flip back over to here. I'm going to go to my calcium and put in. Okay, so now we're back to the potassium here. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this a little shake. And then we're going to dump it in here. So it's already been like a 12 minute test. I'm going to set this over here. Let it go through that funnel for 10 minutes. Do my magnesium test. Magnesium by far is, magnesium is the quickest changing color in the solution. It goes from red to blue in one drop, boom, you're there. There's, there's actually, there's no guessing involved in it. The only thing is, is you're using such a little amount of uh, solution of your tank water here that I do know my results range between, like you know, 1320 to 1380, somewhere right in there. I mean, it's off by, it can be off by like, you know, one test after another by, you know, 20, 30, 40 points. So I don't know if that just has something to do with the drop sizes or, or whatnot or. You know, I'm just an idiot. I don't know. Could be. So this, you're supposed to do this kind of slow, but I don't. So what I always do is start that first drop off. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Drops any air bubbles. There's one. I'll shake this. Two. Three.
shake this for a minute. This normally is my time when I'm catching up on everybody else's videos and stuff on YouTube. It's normally when I'm doing it. <clears throat> Another thing when it comes to testing is your lighting. You know, don't play with your lighting. Um, you know, if you, when it comes to your lighting and testing, honestly, you don't want to touch your lights. I would say for two months, if you want to adjust something. If you were like me when I first started off in this hobby, and you know you're playing with it every week, you just you don't even know what you're doing to your test results because the more light you use the more calcium you're going to use the less light you're going to use the less it has it has a lot to do with it um, i know that for when i changed my my hydrogen ones to my hydro 52s you know i had them all on the same settings but man my test results i just, just way 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 off so your lights have a lot to do with your testing too is it a fact? It's a well, it's a Mofro fact. Okay, now we're gonna go with B. Okay, same thing with this. Air bubble doesn't matter between the top of the solution and the plunger. That has no bearing on, on your readings here, unless you're using more than ten. And like I said, if you are, you got bigger issues than testing. That's for damn sure. Well my camera, I think it just dips out at, at 20 minutes, so I don't know how much. I lost on uh, that last test I did, but regardless, we're back on the uh, potassium test now. So this has been sitting in here for 10 minutes. It, there's a little line on here. If you're over that line, you're good to go. Because I need to suck some uh, juice out of here. So what you do, just take this out, dump this, get the filter out of there. Set these right there. Okay, now I'm going to grab this one. The only thing I use this syringe for is to pull the mixture out of this vial. And I'm pulling the same way I do it out of the tank. Go back and forth, I'm going to get all the air bubbles out of there. Come up. Right past three. Hold this in the light so I can see the line. Past three. So now I got th three milliliters in here. Now this is going in this file. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take C, which is two drops. Now this is the part you don't want to spot your drops on. <laughs> so always go over top of a rag first just to make sure you're getting a good drop without an air bubble in it. Honestly, I don't mind wasting one drop like that because if you get a tiny little air bubble in there on that part of the test, you're already 25 minutes into the test and you got to start over. Or you can say, oh, it's good enough. No, it's not. Okay, this test has, uh, if you go on uh, review sites, it has a lot of bad reviews because people can't tell the color difference. They say, oh, it's 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 it doesn't change enough it's you know it's not accurate enough well can you see the bio right now let me see here. let me zoom in on this because this is pretty important here okay it looks on my camera that looks blue and in person it looks it definitely looks purple let me see if I can't change that Okay, I changed uh, uh, the color on my camera to 99K, so that is definitely purple now. It looks purple. And the, what I'm talking about here is why it's getting bad reviews, is if you're, if you're gonna try and make do this test and you're not on a bright white piece of paper, you're an idiot. That's all I got to say about that. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. This was a pretty hard element to get dialed in. I had no idea how much I would I was going to be 
using or having to use. Um, I have two of my peristolic dosers left over from bulk reef supply and I'm probably going to hook this up to it because this is using um, three and a half mils a day. Blue. If I use 0.25, 394 parts per million. supposed to be between 390 and 410. So my iron is reading zero again. I'm gonna have to bump that up a little bit. If you can see the card here, it's supposed to be reading. What is that reading? It doesn't even tell you if it's parts per million or parts per thousand or whatever, but it's supposed to be at uh, 0.15 and I'm reading straight up zero. So we'll, uh, we'll bring that up slow. Now we're going to do my iodine test. So we got, uh, you're supposed to do, uh, have a control sample with this, but dude, I'm not doing that. It's, it's not happening. So the darker the lower, so I would say we are, we're rated right between 0 0.03 and 0 0.06. So. We're right on the money for this one too. Close enough. So we'll call that uh, 0 0.04. Now we're going to do my uh, low level nitrate test. So we got five drops today. I'm really going to test zero on this one. <clears throat> Pretty darn sure. So on this card it says, just like all the other ones, man, nine minutes. Set your timer for nine minutes. Hit start. Let that sit right there. Um, as for the reagents, when it comes to it, I'm pretty sure the Hanna phosphate checker is probably the most expensive per test. So make sure you, you set a timer up for this one because this thing automatically turns off by itself after three minutes. And after three minutes, if you take it, it's going to start all over. And I'm not quite sure what it broke down to. 30, 50 cents per test or something like that. I'm not sure. Somewhere in that, that general area, though. <clears throat> Same thing is the alkalinity. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my vial with uh, microfiber cloth. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to get this set first. So I'm going to try to get all the reagent to one side. It would be a lot better if they made this uh, a liquid reagent, but it is what it is. So what I do is I just kind of open this up. Try to get it all in the middle, ready to go. Okay, turn this on. I called it one. No air bubbles, no fingerprints. Stick that in, hit the button, let it zero out. Add COVID 2. Add COVID 2 means pull this out. Take this. Take your reagent here. Dump it in. Get as much as possible in here. So, kind of tap this. Pull this back and forth. Kind of tap this. Alright, good enough. Okay, wipe your fingerprints off again. Look at it in the light, make sure you don't see any of them. And then you can see like a white powder in here. And uh, same thing with this one, you don't want to shake it violently, you don't want to put micro bubbles in there. Alright, looks good. So now with this one, you stick it in, press and hold the button. 
And that starts a timer, a three minute timer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to this phone and I'm going to put on a three minute timer. So like I said, you get involved in doing other stuff and after like four minutes, this thing will shut off by itself and then you gotta start the whole test over again. There's no way saying butts about it. So that's looking good. This is definitely gonna test zero, I can, I can already tell. What I'm gonna do at the end of this video is hand feed all my corals, give you a little treat at the end of the video. All right, so phosphates, zero. I just did a salinity test and that is reading on the left hand side it's right above 0 0.025 and on the left hand side it's right below 35 parts per thousand. That's where I keep it. I keep it between 1.025 and 35 parts per thousand. That's where I like to click keep my salinity. Okay so my uh, nitrate test just went off. Let's take a peek at this. See them? Or it's zero. That's because I'm using the uh, the Zeovit system, which is awesome. I'm never gonna have to worry about my nitrates or phosphates. But you do have to worry about you know dosing your supplements every day, which I am going to do right now. I'll show you that too. I'm gonna do a little dosing. This is um, it's not done every day. Certain things are done. Certain things are done every day. That is my zeal start and my uh, potassium that gets done every day this here is iron since I'm still not testing anything for iron I'm supposed to put in four mils per week so I'm going to do Mills. I'm going to test it tomorrow. Put some more in there. And I have uh, I have different syringes for each one that I, I put in here too. So this is, I use uh, Pulse K-Balance for my, uh, my potassium supplement. And I said, like I said, I put about three and a half milliliters in here per day. This is the, this one and my zero start is the only one that gets dosed every day. And my zero start, I put uh, I'm probably gonna end up putting that on a peristaltic doser also. I guess you get the way better results, but this is I mean I'm really not feeding the system that much, so it's only getting one mil per day. And you're supposed to it's best, I say, if you spread that out. So if I spread that one mil out, you know, in like five or six doses, it would be butter. But I'm pretty sure this is nothing but, it smells like vinegar. They're probably charging me, you know, 30 bucks for vinegar. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Zeal food. This is what uh, kind of feeds the corals a little bit here. So this, I just changed my, uh, my actual Zeovit system in the reactor the other day, so you gotta kinda step this up. Normally this is getting uh, like eight drops every four days. I'm doing eight drops every three days right now. Eight. This is Zeobac, this is the bacteria. This right here is the reason um, you don't need uh, phosphates or nitrates. That's what this is supplementing right here. Because if I was, wasn't was running a Zeovit system, you definitely want to have traces of nitrates and phosphates. I don't care what anybody says. Your system would be running too clean if it didn't. Unless you're dosing, but if you're dosing like this, then uh, you would definitely be reading it because you're not running zero it. This here is sponge power. 
This is for like the filter feeders. All right, so when it comes to feeding my corals, what I do is I completely shut my system down to where the return pump, nothing, actually nothing's on. So what I do is there's just a little bit of uh, reef frenzy in here and a little bit of uh, PE mysis. This right here is just to feed the shrimp, snails, starfish, and uh, there's an urchin in there. and. Uh, I'm going to try to get a video of, I got some uh, olive snails that live in the sand bed. They're really cool, man. The feet on them are like that big. And they're like, when they come out of the sand bed, when they smell this stuff, they come out like a freaking submarine. It's pretty cool. So this here is uh, Dr. G's Arctic Cyclops Gopi Pods. So I just mix that up. But this I'm going to dump in first to keep my uh, shrimp away from this while I'm feeding my corals or so they'll just dive right on the corals and take it all from them this here is uh, uh, polyp labs reef roids so what I'm gonna do here is just one two I've been target feeding like this once a week and then kind of broadcast feeding once a week I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to up it I'm going to target feed twice a week and then broadcast feed once a week for uh, you know the other stuff but I'm going to use a lot less I'm going to use the same about the same amount of, of food but spread it over three days instead of doing it for two days because I think I think these shrimp are getting pretty damn hungry they're only eating uh, twice a week uh, this guy didn't make it in my last video this uh this blasto Doing really nice. There's a bunch of heads on him. Looking really good. Super healthy. Alright, so I just completely shut down the system. 100%. No pumps, no nothing. Everything should stop moving. And if you're going to target feed, that's pretty crucial. I mean, even if you have your return pump on, it, uh, you know, some of the, the smaller corals, it, it blows it away. So if you're going to target feed, um, you, you don't want any flow in the tank whatsoever. So now I'm just going to dump this in here. And hopefully the shrimp and... This is pretty cool. These guys just do like a little dance in the water. Pretty cool. I think Diablo knew that stuff came out. It's been sleeping back there. He'll figure it out. But first things first, wait until you see how these things open up when I start feeding. Not quite sure what this is exactly is called, but it's got a little tip on it like this. And I actually took uh, some razor blades and I cut that off to make the hole a little bigger. Very gently. Give him some goods. Who's cool to watch? This, these two guys are pretty cool. They close up when they get food. They know what's going on. These two torches here. These pumps are on a timer. 10 minutes, that's how long everything's off for.
these Dunkins react really good to food. I mean, they just close right up around it. It can speed pretty well too. Look at the size of uh, this well so here. Look at this thing, man. Looks like a freaking balloon. Looks like that thing's gonna just blow away. That's awesome. We feed the uh, elegance. All right, now I'm just going to take this thing off the tripod and give you a little up close. Everything is just turning back on right now. I can't believe how big he is right now. My God, that thing does look like it's just going to float away. So I'm going to start doing that twice a week and then broadcast feeding like a quarter of that once a week just to, just to get some, some food in the system. You didn't see me hit all these little Zoas but I hit them too. Turn some settings down here a little bit so I can get this to come in a little better. Mouth on that uh, Lobo's wide open. Mouth on this guy was just wide open too. And this guy. I really thought I was going to get a picture of... Uh get some footage of the olive snail but I'm not seeing them that guy's really washed out right there that was a really expensive coral that's the uh, Jason Fox Fox flame it's supposed to have yellow tips on them it's not dead He's not dying. He's just kind of washed out. We'll see what happens. I have faith. All right, well, thanks for hanging out. I will uh, catch you on the next one. Keep it clean. Peace.